Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. We want to let you know that we have once again been honored with a nomination for the Hockey Podcast of the Year via the Sports Podcasting Awards. And all you need to do to help us is go to OurKidsPlayHockey.com and click on the Vote Now button. It asks you a couple questions. You're in and you're out, and you have voted for us for Hockey Podcast of the Year. I want to thank you all for being a wonderful, wonderful audience and helping us get to this stature of hockey podcasting because we've done it as a family, as the hockey friends and families around the world. Thanks so much and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to yet another great edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. I'm joined today by Mike Benelli and, as always, Christy Cashier Burns. And we're also joined by Troy Albert, founder of the Peconic Hockey Foundation, whose mission it is to grow the game of hockey through scholarships, training, and other programs. Their aim is to grow the culture of hockey by helping to offset the cost of participation and to create more opportunity to families who want to play hockey on the east end of Long Island. So first off, Troy, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here today. Thanks. It's nice to be here. I appreciate it. No problem. So, you know, the organization, uh, the Peconic Hockey Foundation, has all the ideals that we often speak about on this show. Participation, opportunity, safety, player development, education, commemoration. Uh, it doesn't end with you guys. So what was the motivation to start the foundation? Uh, and what's it been like to see it grow over the last few years? I mean, it's pretty simple. You know, it was about six years ago that my my kids, they, they talked about playing hockey and we were like, my wife, Karen, and I, we, we discussed it and we were like, you know what? It's such a long haul. You know, it's 45 minutes to the, the closest rink, even for practice. Games are going to be a couple hours away easily every time. And we went to go visit my brother. My brother lives in Minnesota on a lake. And we spent the whole Christmas skating on the lake. And that was it. The kids were set. They're like, Dad, we want to play hockey forever for the rest of our lives. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so it's uh, so much fun, as we all know. And we decided to pursue it. And while we were pursuing it, we realized like, wow, there's kids that are coming an hour east of us that are still trying to get to the rink. Some of these kids are going an hour and a half, two hours just to hit a practice. So we decided at that point, we said, you know what, maybe we should start a foundation about growing the game, raising awareness, see if we can help these families. And eventually maybe we'll get a rink on the East End. And it's been about five years and we've had great success and a lot of fun and we do a lot of things with pros and and uh you know we've raised a lot of money and we've given a lot of money to scholarships to families and it's just it's been just an exciting roller coaster so you know i, I want to say to our listeners who might not be familiar just with the ge geography of where you live and how much of an enigma this is so the east end of long island is surrounded by hockey all around it if you put a hundred mile radius right where you live. The New York Islanders are nearby. The New York Rangers are nearby. The New Jersey Devils are nearby. Uh, you know, if you drive up north, I mean, you're, not, you're, you're a little far from Buffalo. And if you drive south, you're a little far from Philadelphia. But there's literally hockey surrounding the entire area. But as you said, on the eastern side of Long Island, there are no rinks. So it's a familiar story that we hear around the country, right, of, of kids having to drive enormous amounts of time just to get to play the game they love. Uh, so I just wanted to set the setting there. Now, turning it to Mike real quick, Mike Benelli. Mike, Mike's been involved with this organization one way or another for a while, too. So, you know, Mike, what are your thoughts on this so far and any questions for Troy? Yeah, I mean, when I first met Troy and his team, I think it was through USA Hockey and the coaching education program. And, you know, they were j just getting started and, you know, just just having different ways uh, to help their kids grow. And when you think like I'm local to New York, so I know Long Island. And when you think Long Island, like, oh, Long Island. There's tons of hockey. Right, there's hot, right. there's rinks everywhere in Long Island. You know, so when you look at, but then when you start thinking about where they are in Long Island, it, it's amazing. It's, it was shocking to me that there, a there was no facility, um, and 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 really just because of the amount of kids and the population there, I think what Troy and the Peconic Hockey Foundation have, have have seen and found is that there is an unbelievable need for more kids to skate and have this ice skating, not only hockey, but any skating sport. Um, and, you know, we don't have the luxury of Minnesota. We don't have, right. you know, this year was a little different, obviously, but we don't have that weather where you could just skate on ponds and they, you know, they're skating on the Long Island sound. So there's no, there's no ice there. So I think it's, um, you know, so I think when we, when I got involved and, and, and just seeing what Troy and, and, and Karen and, and the group has done, um, it, it is really amazing what they've done in such a short period of time. I mean, five years seems like a long time, 
but it's just in the, in the scheme of, we've always heard all around the country, Oh, this guy's going to build a rink or they're going to do this. And it takes years and years right. and years and years. But I think, you know, their mission and the people they have involved and the type of contacts they've, they've really gotten through, you know, the, the pro, the pro guys and, and the players and the ownerships, um, the need is there. And I think the, the education's there and Troy and his team have done a great job, you know, even just bringing awareness to what hockey is for kids that aren't like him. Right. And other people like him that are just crazy hockey people. Right. And, and that financial struggle is real because we all know, I mean, hockey blows a big hole in your family budget. It's, it's an expensive sport. And I think that is one of the reasons why a lot of parents hesitate to committing because you mean, think about the amount of money that you have to pay just to gear your kid up. It's not like just grab a soccer ball and play. I mean, there's a lot of gear, there's a lot of upkeep, and even the uh, the ring fees can be expensive too. So that's great that you're able to at least take that uh, financial obstacle at least a little bit, make it easier for families, um, Troy, because I think that is one of the, one of the biggest hesitancies for families signing up their kids for hockey, the fear of the cost. Without a doubt. This is all being videotaped, right, Lee? Absolutely. So if I say Mike Benelli has been no help this entire time, <laughs> I can put that on the air. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> the uh, uh, subtitle yeah, of our podcast. I just come for the gear. I just come for yeah. the gear. Oh, okay, okay. The best gear. They have the best gear. <laughs> So to go back on a couple of things, one, yes, Mike has been phenomenal. And he's actually the one that introduced us into floorball. And we actually brought floorball into the schools on the East End. And, you know, we've uh, donated a ton of the sticks and, and started the programs and the training. And uh, I can't say enough for Mike and all he's done. And on the other end, what you're saying about the costs, yes. And, you know, we've, we've given out over $50,000 in scholarships to kids in the last couple of years. And you, you, you would be amazed and shocked these letters that you get from these families and how hard up they are and their situation and everything that's going on. And it's just like, you, it brings tears to your eyes when you read these letters and it, you feel so good about helping these families out. So it's a, it is, it's a tremendous toll on families. And this year we actually started our first East End um, travel hockey team and we ran the entire event at cost. So this whole season was less than uh, it was about $2,500 and that was their uniform. That was all the practice ice. That was everything we did for the entire year, which is amazing for a travel hockey team to charge only $2,500. That is because I think, I mean, we've paid as much as 10,000 in a year for travel hockey. <laughs> when you add up the hotels, the cost of travel. One year I, I did add it up. It was ten thousand dollars. No lie, it's crazy. <laughs> crazy, huh? No, and I think that that was that was that was my point to Troy. Thanks for bringing that up because I mean the, the scholarships alone, but the supplementing the program to provide access is all part of that too, right? I mean that's a, like a hidden cost or you know a hidden piece of this is that you're not spend you're not giving money away, but you're you're also not taking money from people uh, overly. To, to, for all this overhead that a lot of programs, you know, have. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, to Troy's point, I think from the floorball end of things, there really was just more of a, you know, they, they, that group and his, his, you know, his team of, of foundation members, you know, saw, um, you, you know, the need for education and for just letting people know, well, this is what, you know, we talk about it all the time, you know, hockey is hockey. And this is one way to introduce hockey without the rink, the skates, the helmets, the gloves. And, and they've really gotten a great, um, you know, piece of this, uh, like, you know, from Lisa and other, you know, get, really getting in there. Um, and it, it is, and Troy will try to tell you too, you know, based off of his experience, it's not so easy to give free equipment away sometimes, you know, it's, right. it, it, it takes a little like, Oh, you know, is it going to hurt the floors or is it going to, you know, or, or some people are like, well, this is going to take away from maybe my kid's soccer or, lacrosse it isn't it's just another <laughs> it's just another way to give kids access to a sport and then they then they just gravitate to where they want to gravitate towards Troy it's so true we have a whole trailer of equipment right now because between the Islanders and a lot of the right. teams and the arenas they've all donated their equipment and we tried to recycle the game and this way the kids that you know they can't spend the three hundred dollars on a pair of skates well we've got a whole trailer full of them and we give them out for free to all the kids nice 
you know, one of the things I wanted to say, and, and Troy, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on the show, there's a few reasons. One is that we want to obviously give your foundation uh, it's just due, like what it's deserved, obviously, to, to be in front of an audience. But also, we know a large part of our audience listens to this and might be thinking, you know, we can't get a rink built here or we can't make hockey work here. Uh, and, and I wanted to bring you on because you're an inspiration to those people that, you know, with a little time, a little effort, the right connections, you can really make anything happen, right? Now, with that said, uh, one of the reasons we want to bring you on is uh, one of your main goals is to build a rink in Riverhead uh, in that area of Long Island that would provide a place for hockey. And you've received the go-ahead to have that rink made. But like most things, it's a question of raising funds. So can you just take us and the audience through the process? Because it's been, what, a five, six-year process to get to this point and kind of what you need now to jump the hump uh, to make sure that that ice is put down and that rink becomes a reality. Well, if everyone listening just sends me a hundred thousand dollar check, that would be fine. <laughs> Mike Benelli would be happy to do that. We talked about Absolutely. this. Yeah, yeah. I would be happy. I would be happy. No, it, it's funny because you know when you talk about Long Island, you're right. You know when you go to the Nassau side, the Nassau County side, which is the west side of Long Island, there's a lot of hockey rinks, but then at exit 58, it stops. Right. And for those of you that don't know Long Island, well, there's a whole another. 45 minutes to an hour before the Long Island splits and there's a North Fork and the South Fork. And what nobody realizes is there's not a single covered full-size hockey rink east of that exit 58. So for example, the, the kids that I had this year, um, I had one kid that lived in Montauk. That's a two hour drive for him to get the practice. So yes. So for this five years, we have been pushing to get a location, ideally Riverhead, It'd be great if you had Riverhead, if you had two sheets of ice, because the ferries, uh, the ferry comes from Connecticut, just to the North Fork, and you'd be 45 minutes from a hockey rink from these, you know, the teams that want to come down from Massachusetts, Connecticut and everything. But more importantly, it's the, the, the center of the two forks. So you'd have players all from the North Fork and players from the South Fork, which would now have a, a rink at equal distance for them. Um, as far as the the planning and everything. Yeah. I mean, it, it was a lot of work to get where we're at without a doubt. Uh, we met with a number of towns, you know, it's a hard sell, you know, uh, it's tough on the communities. Nobody has money right now. Nobody wants to spend money. And then of course it's, wait a minute, we could put this hockey size rink here and make 10% profit, whatever it is, or they could put a target in and make 30% profit with the same space. So you have to convince people that love the game, most likely want to help children and give them something for them to do in the winter months. And uh, you, it, it's just so hard to find that need, you know, because so many other people would rather do something else with that space or location. Can I, can I just say something to the community naysayers out there? Hockey ranks can really be an economic boost for your community. Whenever we've held tournaments, we come up with flyers, we hook up with a local mall. We send families that come out of town to our community for tournaments to patronize local businesses. And we found a great relationship with the business community and our hockey rinks because they realize that they recognize that, you know, you know, you know, a lot of people from all over trying to find ice coming in and playing tournaments at your rink or renting the ice. They need a place to stay. They need a place to eat. They need a place to shop. And guess who benefits? everybody around that rank. I think people need to realize that, that it can, if you work with a community, a hockey community, we can actually help grow the business community too and provide an economic boost. I mean, the, the East End of Long Island, if you've never been here, it's gorgeous. You got beaches and you've got the Outlet Mall and Tanger and Riverhead as the, the vineyards and farm country. And it, it's, it's a wonderful place to go for a mini vacation, so. It's also one of those That's a great selling rinks. point. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, like if we get for our listeners, maybe we'll provide one on the screen here, but uh, it's a really interesting area. You have to kind of look at a map because people probably don't realize how, uh, Troy, how close the eastern, Long, eastern end of Long Island, tongue twister there, uh, you know, is close to, like you said, Mass in Connecticut. Like, so having a rink in your area is actually a major connection point. Uh, if you think about the entire corridor that could really change even how uh, leagues are run in that area, right? Because again, driving two hours for a game is not unheard of, 
but practice is a little rough. You put a rink there, you can get up to, to New England real easy, get down to New York real easy. It really could be a hub uh, for the connection point there in Eastern Long Island. I agree. When you look at it, you know, Long Island families, we travel all the time, Philadelphia, Massachusetts, wherever it is. And we go to these tournaments, we take the ferries, but there really is no hockey tournaments on Long Island yeah. because nobody wants to go through all the bridges, fight the traffic, get to the middle of Long Island just to go for a tournament. Versus if you came across that ferry and you had a nice quiet 40 minute drive through the farmlands, I mean, right. it, you know, everybody would be coming in on. So. Right. And, and as you said, Troy, it, it is a beautiful area. I've been in there. That's actually going to segue me to my next question. You know, I've attended a couple of your events, uh, the Legends Inventational Golf Tournament, which was incredible, uh, and the Team Scholarship Night. And what I loved most about both of those events was the pride that everyone felt about being involved from the players to the volunteers to you and your family. So how does having events like this help grow your program? And uh, talk a minute about your great team, because, um, you know, I, I, I'm an expert in teams. You know, I'm a big person on teams. Uh, and and it, I mean, the pride was surging out of them at every event. They were happy to be there. There was no one involved that was just like, oh, I was do another event today with Troy. You know, like that was, that was not the attitude at all. Uh, so talk about your team and talk about how these events are a huge part of your foundation. It all started actually with my wife, Karen, because for her, it was so important to have the right people involved. Everyone says, hey, we want to help. We want to volunteer. We're going to be a part of it. And you know, at the end of the day, it's 10% of the population. That's the ones that are actually doing everything and helping out. Um, so the base core started with just really good families. And we started with the rec team. We started with those families and we invited them in. And that's where it grew. Because what happened was we had kids on those teams and they would have two or three of their friends or parents that said, hey, we want to be a part of this. This is awesome what you guys are doing. And that's how it started. And that's how it grew. Now, as far as the Legends Invitational, the, the golf outing that we do and the events, you know, over the years, I've been very fortunate to be friends with like Matt Martin's a great example. Matt came out, skated with the kids, uh, did the scholarship night, was on the ice for a couple hours with them. And John Ledecky from the Islanders from day one, I mean, they have been such a huge part of this and just sponsors and finding us money and then raising money and sending Sparky the mascot to our events, you know, uh, which has been great. And then on top of that, we had just a core of, of just really good board members and uh, they all had the same vision. You know, it's all about the kids at the end of the day, it's growing the game and how can we help the kids and the families? It wasn't about, we're going to build NHL all-stars. We know we're not, you know, we know the percentage of a kid actually going to the NHL is so slim, but, that's not what it was about. So that's what we tried to do. And that's what we're working on. Yeah. But I got, I, I got to answer the question, right? <clears throat> no, well, I got to say, I mean, I, I think, you know, for, for what, for the, for the audience that I think we attract and the parents that, you know, that they're all the same, right. They, 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 they see this uh, opportunity for their son or daughter to play hockey, get all these different life lessons, teamwork and working within the organizations like yours. Um, but the fact is, you know, we're, we're seeing like an Adam Fox, right? A, a kid like, like we're seeing Long Island success over and over and over again at the NHL. And that started because or that that was facilitated because there was access. And I think we're missing the Long Island hockey community is missing this whole group of people that are not even getting exposure to skating and hockey because it's just to Troy's point, they Google, you know, Hicksville, Long Island. And Nassau County and say, well, I, I, I can't take a five hour trip for a 45 minute practice. And I think, um, you know, the, so the, the need uh, is there, you know, certainly it helps all the different aspects of the community, but there's so there's a population density is there to support an ice rink and an ice hockey facility, not only for the elite kids, because I think there did be a lot, um, but for the recreational Every day, just what the Islanders do and Ann Rena and JC and those folks with John Ledecky's group, you know, of, of providing ho free hockey to all these kids uh, with equipment. But you need ice. At the end of the day, you can't progress the sport unless you have a sheet of ice. Um, and I think that's where this 
this piece comes in and, I, and I've been to, you know, the foundation events and they are, they're run, obviously they're high end, well run, you know, you know, just the, the, the epitome of, you know, what you want to do to create energy and excitement around your organization. And I think what, what Troy's done is put so many good people there that generally want to be there and help. And I think this is, I, I, I would, I would say that this is the way like now, now's the time, all this time of, of doing the work, step up. And I know, you know, Troy, you joke around about, yeah, I just need a hundred thousand dollars from, you know, a couple of listeners, but the truth is there are, there are, there are a handful of people that could make it happen and make it successful. And there is a financial viable way to make it work. And I think it's, uh, and more importantly, it just gives access to thousands and thousands of kids in the community that don't have that access right now. You know, I can give an example. It's uh, April 14th day. Two days ago, I called one of the closer rinks. Let's say it's 45 minutes from the East End out here. And I said, I'm looking at ice time in the fall. I said, what can you give me? And he said, we had two slots in September. I said, okay, how about October? He says, we don't have a single slot from October until February. Not a single hour is available. And they have two rinks. Right. Shows you where it's at. So. That's incredible, you know, <clears throat> and heartbreaking at the same time. Um, Troy, I'm going to tell you a quick story here. And uh, Christy, I'm not even sure if you've heard this one. You know, I, I got involved with uh, Mike and hockey probably about three, four years ago. And, um, you know, Mike's talking to me. He's like, we're going to grow the game. I got all these great opportunities. And he goes, I'm going to send you to a place and uh, you're going to help grow the game there. I go, great. Where are we going? Man, he sent me out to Northwest British Columbia. I, I could touch Alaska from here. Keeping in mind, I'm in Philadelphia. So first trip, I had three flights flying up to, to Kitimat, British Columbia. It was a great trip, right? Uh, I was with Brian Trache. We got to bring the game to some kids out there, but it was a trip. So he calls me again within six months. He goes, listen, I got another, another great trip for you. I'm like, great. What country am I going to this time? He goes, the country of Eastern Long Island, right? <laughs> to come up and visit you. Um, now, the reason I'm telling that story is this, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pivot this episode a little bit because, uh, you know, our, our audience is largely coaches and parents, and we do like to talk about the business side and the hockey side from that aspect. But the thing that I recognize from anywhere Mike sends me is the kids, and it's the smile of the kids when we bring them the game, right? And the passion that sometimes you can see it spark for the first time, and those magical moments uh, are life changing, right? Every trip he sent me on has changed my perception in some way, sometimes small, sometimes large, but it's usually spawned by the kids. And I, I often say I get more out of these trips than I think the organizations do uh, just as an individual human being, right? To see this. Um, so I want to focus on the kids, on the youth here for a few minutes, because that is really why everyone's doing it. It's a love of the game, but talk about the kids in your organization. Again, you've gone from legit practice squad in-house teams to a travel club, right? Your own kids are involved. So tell me what it means to them. Tell me what, what they say it means to them and bring the audience back to being a kid for a moment. Cause I think that's something that we, we, we often forget about too much, right? Of that feeling you had in your chest when you were in middle school, or high school of, man, I got practice tonight. You know what I mean? I got a game today. Walk us through that with your organization. It's funny you say that because so, with our first year of travel, uh, before we were having the, the rec leagues and we always did very well. We did, we brought some tournament teams and we won a couple gold medals and it was awesome. So now we finally get approved to have a travel team. We get approved last fall, which is late in the game because all the teams on Long Island were already set. So we're gonna put together a team with the kids that are not playing travel already. So of course, with any organization, when you just start out, you have limited resources, but we put it together and we had a lot of fun, but we did not have a winning season. And it's very hard for any team to come in at that point and have a winning season. And so we're going to one of the uh, practice ranks and uh, it's an hour away. And I got three kids in the car with me and uh, I'm one of the coaches and we're in the car and we just lost three games in a row. And we just had a bunch of practices. Practices were great. And I'm, and I'm sitting here saying to myself, I'm like, oh man, these guys, they must, just hate being in the car right now right like here we are we just lost three games in a row and now we're going to another practice and they got to sit with an hour if the coach in the car and this must be driving them crazy so i said to the one kid 
uh, that's on the team, I said, well, I said, uh, we're going to try and have some fun tonight, you know, and uh, we're going to have some fun drills and, you know, change things up a little bit. And he said, I can't wait. I was oh. like, what? <laughs> He's <laughs> like, you have no idea how excited I am. He's like, do you know, he goes, I was thinking about it. He goes, we got three practices this week and we got two games this weekend. He goes, that's five nights of hockey I have this week with you guys. I am so excited. I can't tell you. And I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, because every now and then, you know, you, even as coaches or a parent or the foundation, you get down on yourself and you're like, you know what? It's not going the way I wanted. You know, we're not getting the participation. People aren't getting involved. People aren't volunteering. And then all of a sudden you get a little peek, you know, John Ledecky from the Islanders called so-and-so and they want to be a part of it. And, and, and it's, it's raising, it's raising. And all of a sudden everyone's like all gung-ho again, right? So when you, when you hit that and you hit that moment and that kid said it, it was just like, wow. They love it. They absolutely love it. So that keeps you motivated. It's the kids yeah. that keep us motivated. And uh, every one of really us can say that. So he started first line that day. <laughs> <laughs> right. There you go, Trip. kids. There's your tip of the day. Right. Here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Get a little extra ice time today. Good job. No, but so, I think that I think that's the, uh, Troy. I think your point, and, and you know where Lee too was going there, with, where like when I come to the foundation events and you see the kids outside and you have the floorball rink set up and you watch, you know Jeremy Roenick, you know playing goalie against all the Peconic Hockey Foundation kids. He's having as much fun as they are, and then you see like Mark Messier there and he's shooting on the kids and and you know and I think that's you know, and Troy's a hockey guy. And I think that, you know, our audience, I mean, that's one of the really, and not, not that there's not other people there than hockey people, but the, the, the players are truly what sets them apart. I think what sets them apart from other professional athletes is when you see these guys jump out there, they're kids. They, they resort to being a 10 year old child dangling you know and, they, and there's no mercy either on those guys i watched ken danico i mean he almost ran over somebody you know on, 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 the, on the floorball court he's like i'm winning this battle right now you know and i think when you see those guys and you know you see the bus out there and this guy's holding a hockey stick it, it, you just you just really that energy and i think what the foundation does uh, in that in that little small window provides i think the energy for the rest of your group troy because i think the energy you get from being involved in that you know, helps drive you to the next year and say, okay, this is worth something doing. And it's, and it's, and it's really making an impact. And I, I truly believe that once, you know, this, you know, nobody wants to do the work of, you know, budgeting and pulling permits and looking at, you know, feasibility studies, you know, in the East End of Long Island. But once that's all done and the pieces are in place, I think it's real easy then to get involved. I think that's when people can step up and, and really say, okay, you know what? Thanks for doing, thanks for doing all that work. I didn't have to be involved in, but now I can make an impact here. And I think that's where that, and I think more people need to see that, that energy. And to Troy's point, it's the same, right? Every organization has a lot of volunteers and, and, and a very few amount of people that actually do the work and, and get in the car for an hour and drive kids to practice. They'll say they want to help, but his group and his, his group of volunteers, they work. I mean, you see them at their uh, foundation events, they're getting dirty and I think, and they're doing the job. And I think it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's paying off every day. You know, just to add to that, that, that there's one thing to, to be said about the sport. You never stop playing women's league, men's league, whatever it is, you know, you never lose that deep inside as a kid. And exactly what we're talking about, we're playing floorball with all the NHL stars and then we're, we, that night we end up having a cocktail party and Justin Williams comes to me and says, Hey, can we, can we get the floorball game going again? Yeah. <laughs> and we did. Yeah. <laughs> we I love it. I love it's, it. It's, it's you, you never give it up. And it's just one of those sports that you just, listen, you see it all the time. You see in Bluth, Minnesota, I know he passed away a couple years ago, but the guy was 90 years old and he was still playing adult right. men's league, you know? Yeah. So it's great. I think we're all hoping that's going to be us, you know? Uh, another question I have for you, Troy, is it, it's an interesting position for your kids, uh, you know, watching you and Karen lead this foundation. So we often talk about the life lessons that uh, you, the youth is able to learn from hockey when it comes to things like, you know, sportsmanship and, and just the you know, adversity you deal with in the, in the game. 
what do you think your kids have learned from, uh, you know, watching their parents lead this, but also being a part of it from the ground up? Boy, that's a good question. I, first of all, I am blessed with just three beautiful children, Jake, Sydney, and Jordan. They are incredible. And, you know, I think they've learned so much from sports. You know, Jordan plays soccer and Sydney's now playing field hockey. And I see them taking to the game everything that they grew up with. So the two girls are the younger and Jake is my oldest, but Jake has always had the hockey team over at the house playing street hockey. And the girls have been there since day one playing goalie or defense, whatever it is. And so for them, they all grew up with the teams as, you know, as we got older and played at different levels. And we've always had so much interaction um, because it was always important to us, whether we're doing retreats or, scavenger hunts at the hotel or whatever it is. Um, we've always tried to keep all the kids extremely busy, extremely active, and all the siblings were always a part of it, no matter what. Sometimes they had contests where the siblings were all drawing posters and hanging them up on the uh, glass and you know cheering and, and you know just always doing a lot of things. So it was never just about the team. It really was about keeping everybody involved. And I think that's what the the parents also recognized and why they like being a part of it so much. But as for the kids side, there's always those hockey parents that are crazy, right? No parents in the building. You don't need any refs. The kids will play forever, but it's the parents that sometimes wreck the game for any sport. And I think they're very fortunate at a young age to kind of see that sometimes, you know, it's, a, it's not hockey. It's for all sports. It's sometimes with those parents and we would talk about it and, you know, those are learning lessons about what to do and what not to do. And um, so, yeah, it's been a great experience for all of them. You know, somewhere out there listening to this show right now is a person that thinks uh, they want to do more or has a vision of maybe I want to build a rink or I want to grow my community standing and create something for my kids. Uh, as someone who's done that, what is your advice to them? right now don't do it listen it doesn't matter whatever you would do in life right you need to have a strong foundation and you have to have a and i don't mean a pecan of cocky foundation you need a strong foundation you need a life partner you need someone that's going to support you and you need to share that support and if you don't have that, it's impossible, but you have to convince others to believe in you and to believe in that team. And once you have that, sky's the limit. It sounds like you've run some pretty successful fundraisers too. And I think a lot of people get stuck on how do I raise money? Um, you know, how do I get people motivated? What would your advice be? Um, is there something that was, has been super successful for you, a good formula that works? I was actually uh, very fortunate to already work at a golf club. So for me, it was easy after 20 years of running events and weddings and parties and bar mitzvahs and golf outings. Um, and I kind of brought everything together to say, what was the greatest outing ever? Okay, that one, they did that. And that outing, we pulled that from. And I tried to take all those pieces and build one outing. And by doing that, it's pretty funny because, I mean, we get pros from all over. And when I say all over, it's like Mike Benelli said, Jerome Bettis flies up from Atlanta. Uh, Messier flew down. We get uh, Jeremy Roenick flew in from Arizona. Um, so these guys. And, these, and, these guys, and some of these guys are literally flying themselves, by the way. Right? Like, yeah, you know. Absolutely. These, like Mark Messier's flying in to long island you know i think i think even ed westfall yeah and and what happens is our board is running all over the place picking people up at airports doing whatever you know because they're all spending their own money to get here but what happens is when they're here they were so excited because like oh wow that guy's here <laughs> like did mark messi just say that <laughs> like they should say that mark's here so anyways <laughs> they would all get excited and they're all seeing each other as like a big reunion, right. Of 20 to 30 years of hockey pros and football stars and baseball and basketball. And for them, they loved it. And so I tried to treat them with the uh, utmost respect and just make sure that they had a great time. It wasn't about 
giving autographs and everybody taking pictures and swamping them. It was about them coming out, relaxing, supporting the cause, and then people, of course, spending money to be here with them. And it's just been such a success. And it's so funny because now this time of year, I'm already getting emails from the pros. What's the date? When's the outing this year? Because please, can I come? You know, so it's, uh, right. it's been great. So and they're asking you if they can come. Exactly. Wow. It's been <laughs> a big no impressive. Yeah, there's no doubt. It's run so well that I think, you know, you watch the, they, you know, I know the, the, the folks that I talk to, they're always like, when is that? When's that Troy Albert running that thing again? I got to get, <laughs> I, I got to get in on that. You know, I want to make sure, and I want to make sure I get my table of supporters with me. Like one of the, I think the, I mean, obviously the golf's fun, but the, one of the most fun parts is too, is the auction and the dinner and the cocktail hour. Cause these guys, I mean, there's no holding back when you hear like Jeremy Roenick up there emceeing, you know, a, uh, a, a night, of a, you know a cocktail party it, it, it's it's fun and it's, it's really one of those experiences where if you can be involved in it as a participant you know and a paid supporter of the Peconic Hockey Foundation I think you get much more out of it than what you paid I mean it really is an unbelievable I mean John Ledecky's auctioning off you know trips to, you know on the team plane with you know the New York Islanders to go down to Philly and back and things like that like experiences that you normally wouldn't get but I, I just want to say one thing about what you know uh, Christy to your point in the, in the organizations you know when I talk to organizations and work with them about fundraising I think you know Troy's obviously uh, used the leverage of what he does for a living to help him sp spawn this foundation right and have the the ability to do that but I would say that for any organization Find the people that have access to these special things that they can do and leverage them to help you do your fundraiser. There's only so many bake sales and car washes, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, if you have somebody, you know, that's a golf pro or somebody that runs uh, a laser tag center or somebody that has, you know, uh, you know, whatever, like me, like I'm a fisherman, like if somebody ran a, a you know, a fishing lodge, like all those type of things are great ways to leverage something that, like a guy like Troy already does. He's an expert in the field of what he's doing. And now he's just putting those two worlds together. I would say for any organization that wants to raise money, find those people. They don't have to be hockey coaches. They don't always have to be the team managers that do all the work. Somebody else within your organization that can add uh, to the fundraising efforts. And, you know, those people that are like when they're fundraising, like they're actually getting a great experience. Um, so, you know, it's not like they're giving money just away and getting nothing from it. They're giving, they're giving money to something they love to do anyway. And it's for a great cause. And I think any organization out there doesn't have access, uh, to, to, <laughs> to Sabonic golf course that, uh, you know, they can do other things that are just as impactful and meaningful, you know, to their communities. Well said, Mike. Uh, Christy, Mike, any other final thoughts before I close this out? We want to see that rank belt. <laughs> I like that. And, you know, and then I want an invite. <laughs> right. Definitely. Absolutely. You know, Troy, this is what I'll, I'll tell the listeners. Um, we talked a lot about the foundation of the kids and stuff, but this is what I find most amazing about this. Whether we're talking about a Mark Messier, John Ledecky, building the rink, travel teams down to the uh, in-house league, you know, when you deconstruct all of it, it comes down to a young boy in Minnesota just loving the game of hockey. And that is what spawned this whole thing. Um, so if we impress anything on anyone today, it's the love of the game that you have, that we all have. It's a, it's a unique hockey thing that cannot be explained. But if you're listening to the show, you know what I'm talking about. There's a great quote. Hockey's not something you do. It's something you are. I used to say only people in hockey understand that. But if you have that passion, and, and li literally everyone on here is an example of this, it can make you do amazing things, amazing things, make you do things you never thought possible, whether it's writing a book or creating a company or working with teams or creating a foundation or building a rink. Uh, it can drive you to do amazing things, but you have to tap into the eight or nine-year-old version of you to make it happen. And we, I think we forget to do that at times, right? And uh, Troy, every time I talk to you, I see that kid come out. You can see it come out, whether you have a goatee or not. Just so everybody knows, by the way, uh, for those of you listening, if it's hockey season, Troy has a goatee. And if it's not, he doesn't. That's how you know he's in and out of season. Which <laughs> I found, so and it, your wife was, went out of her way to explain the whole process of that. That, you know, when you shave that goatee <laughs> off, it's a big, big deal. 
It's yeah, two it's weeks not. away, by the way. <laughs> he knows yeah. he's going to date. Changing the, the changing of the seasons. Right. Yeah. So anyway, before I sign off, Troy, why don't you just let everybody know, uh, you know, where they can get in contact with you uh, and Pecanic Hockey Foundation. If they want to support, obviously, building the rink, uh, what's the best method to do that? The simplest would be just go to our website, and you should check us out, uh, www.pecanichockey.org. And there's a simple donation button on there. And uh, we're 501c3, so tax-free. We're all volunteers. There's not a single person that's paid in our foundation. And that would be lovely. And uh, honestly, thank you. You guys You guys have some great podcasts. Love the show. Everything that you guys have ever done, I can't say enough. And it's, it's, it's just a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, it goes both ways, my friend. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come on here today. So that is going to do it for this episode. It's been a great one uh, for Mike Benelli, Christy Casciano, Burns, Troy Albert joining us here, here today. This has been an edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure you check us out on OurKidsPlayHockey.com or you can listen to this podcast wherever podcasts are out there. We're everywhere. Uh, this has been our 25th episode. So congratulations to everybody on here. Troy, thanks for being part of that. Again, everybody, thank you so much for listening. And we will see you next time on Our Kids Play Hockey. Have a great day, everyone. I had to sum up what Baconic Hockey is, the foundation, and what it's about. Um, it's really, the bottom line is, they're for the kids. It's, it's 100% all for the kids. And it's a positive overall experience. We care a hell of a lot about winning. We, 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 we do. But winning, it, it's not the Lombardi theory. It's not that winning is the only thing. It's the journey to get there. Now it started with a core group of families and friends. And when other families and friends see that, you want in. And you see the way the core acts. They're not over the top, they're not screaming at refs, they respect the game. You know, hockey is really about respect, and we promote that. What do you think the biggest difference is between other coaches you've had and the coaches you have now on the Wildcats? They just like to pump you up more. Like, yeah. they blast music in the locker room. They just want to have fun, and that's what it's all about. Uh, I like it because we get to meet other people because there's always new people on the team. It's not like one person gets cut. It's just one big like group of people that we just get along with, really. It's not like we just see each other on weekends. Like We always hang out and stuff. So it's more like a family? Yeah. yeah. It's just like so fun to like hang out with my friends and like just yeah. skating and like scoring and stuff. It's just so fun for me. Yeah. I like cheering on the benches. Um, and I also like hanging out with um, his friends and some of um, like the like sisters, and it's getting like it's really fun. The last question. Yeah, no worries. Uh, every every kid that walks walks onto the team for Khan Hockey Foundation. What's the end goal for every every single kid that walks? How to make him a better human being. Yeah, let him have some fun and make him a better human being. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually character first. The over ability. I mean, ability is nice, but a bunch of kids, you don't need a bunch of, you're not going to win with 10 Wayne Gretzky's or 8 Wayne Gretzky's. No, you, know, you have to have a team. You know, a Messier offsets a Gretzky, a Taze offsets a Kane. So you need those type of people. You need people with personalities that can gel. Somebody that holds the door for you, somebody said please and thank you, goes a long way.